two, we're asked to solve the following inequalities for the interval zero, including zero, up to but not including two pi. And so all of these inequalities are considered nonlinear inequalities. And so we solve all nonlinear equalities the same way by making use of what's called a sine diagram. Now this is, you know, sine S-I-G-N, meaning plus minus, not good old-fashioned trigonometric sign. And so the first step in all these is to get everything on one side and zero on the other. We've already done that. And so I'm going to let f of x be the function on the left-hand side. So the first thing we have to look for, are there any domain issues? Uh, on 0 to 2 pi, and the answer is no. Sine is defined on 0 to 2 pi, perfectly fine. The second thing we do then is find the zeros of the function. We set it equal to 0. The trigonometric functions on their domain are continuous. That means that the only way we're going to go from plus to minus is if we jump across at an asymptote or we cross through at an intercept. And so um, we don't have any asymptotes here, so we're finding the intercepts. So I go through the usual machinations. I get sine x equal to minus 1 half. And I get uh, x equals 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. Or x equals 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k for integers k. All right, I only care about 0 to 2 pi, so the only two that I'm going to concern myself with are the 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Okay, so we're just solving an equation like we did back in number 1. So we now make uh, a sine diagram for the function. And so we go to a number line, and we're on a finite uh, a length, a finite length interval here. We start at 0, we include that. We go up to, but we do not include 2 pi. And so we put these numbers on there. We've got the 7 pi over 6 and the 11 pi over 6. And at those two places, the function is equal to 0. So we put zeros above there. And now we have to test and see what's happening uh, in these intervals. Okay, so the f of x is 2 sine x plus 1. We pick something over here. Now we can actually pick 0. Okay, 0 is not a 0 of the function, it's in the interval. We can actually pick 0 and plug that in. I get 2 times the sine of 0 plus 1, and that's going to give me sine of 0 is 0 times 2 plus 1 is 1. So that means I'm going to be positive on that interval. To pick a number between 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, we can choose 3 pi over 2. I can plug that into the function. And that's going to give me um, negative 1 times 2 plus 1 gives me a negative 1, so I'm negative on that interval. And now the question is, uh, what, can I, what can I choose here? There's no common angles between 11 pi over 6 and 2 pi. Okay, so remember, all we need to do is figure out um, if it's going to be positive or negative in there. So let's go back to the unit circle of all things. And let's think about what's going on. Here's 11 pi over 6. And so we're looking at angles in here. And I want to plug them into 2 sine of x plus 1. So what can you tell me about the sine of angles in here? Well, at 11 pi over 6, the sine is negative 1 half. Okay, so if I have an angle between 11 pi over 6 and 2 pi, what can you tell me about its sine? Let's see if I have some angle theta. Well, the sine of theta is going to be less than 0, but it's going to be bigger than negative 1 half. So it would be something like a quarter, for example. So if I plug the sine of theta equals a quarter into this, then I get um, 2 times negative 1 quarter plus 1, 
that gives me a positive one half, which means it's going to be positive. Um, you know, if you want an actual angle, you could always pick theta is say. 2 pi minus the arc sine of a quarter, but I don't want to scare you off too much, but you could plug that in and make that your test value. The point is, is that when you're making these sine diagrams, you just need to know are they positive or negative. And so even though we don't have a specific test value there, we can still know uh, the answer. Okay, so that's one way using the unit circle. There's another way to argue that that is positive as well, and that's to look and think of things geometrically. Okay, so another way to think about this problem is to use what we know about the function 2 sine x plus 1. So alternatively, if I think about the function 2 sine x plus 1, I can quickly read off that I've got a baseline horizontal shift up 1. The period is the same as no, always 2 pi and the amplitude is 2. So I've got the same quarter marks I had before. 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. And I'm going to start I'll plug in 0, head up 2, back to uh, excuse me, back to the baseline, down to negative 1, back up to the baseline, and so the function on 0 to 2 pi looks like this. And so we can see here that we're crossing the x-axis, those correspond to the zeros, and the function is positive up to that point, then it's below, negative, and then it's positive again. So that's another way you can get the sine diagram. All right. So no matter how you get the sine diagram, I go back to my original inequality, and I was looking where the f of x is less than or equal to 0. So what's my final answer to this problem? The f of x is less than 0 between 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, and it's equal to 0 at those points, and so there's the final answer.